So, I'm Moiko Tominaga from Nishi Nippon Institute of Technology. I will now present the scientific challenge of Hibiki no Musashi and the title of Research for Symbiotic System Between Humans and Robots. Our goal is for humans and robots to be able to play soccer together as a team, not just against each other. So we have been looking at the ways to use color and shape to recognize humans. As a communication system, it is difficult to adapt to the communication methods using, used by robots to humans. Therefore, in the near future, we will need a system that allows robots to determine their own actions based on human behavior. This is exactly what we are aiming for in our communication system. In previous research and re development, we have succeeded in getting robots to choose their actions based on international triggers issued by humans. The next step is to select uh, one's own behavior from the implicit behavior of others. This research aim, so robots play human behavior and uh, decide their roles. Here are some suggestions on what issues to work on. First, how to recognize the implicit behaviors of others. Roles and behaviors determined implicitly was uh, predicted based on experience. Also, the team is making decisions based on shared tactics. So what do you think are the actual determining uh, decision-making factors? Maybe location of other others and both, and the speed, and the direction of movement, also score and the elapsed the time. So we tried to clarify the determinations of behavior by clustering the factors that determine what a human or robot decided to do using the tensor sum. It's a neural network. So from this study, we see the following benefits from uh, ephemeral de decisions to organize, organizational decisions and uh, to acquire implicit cooperative behavior with humans. Also from uh, individual skills to team tactics. Why do we use clustering method? I will explain how to use clustering method for decision making. Ordinarily, the characteristics of tensor sum is using clustering ability. This system can visualize and map the simulation situation in a clear way. And also using the interpolation function we don't need this input for situation in the game. We finally divide, divide a system that can output an action when a state quantify quantity clustering of many variables 
is input to TensorStorm. By the way, have you ever heard of some self-organizing map? From this sum, we get a two-dimensional map called the future map. For example, uh, if we use this clustering machine based on animal future data, clustering will be done without using a teacher as shown in the figure on the right. So around here is a bird, and, and around here is a, a, a not bird. So the tensor sum that we use in this project is an extension of this sum. If the input data is a tensor type, the output map will be in the form of a tensor slice. For example, using data on multiple people's preferred drinks and their situations, drink preference by age and changes in drink preferences by situation can be clustered. clustered. Now, I choose the situation of working at a desk here. The result shown the young woman prefer coffee or some tea. But when I choose the party time, we found that they prefer juice, such as cola or ginger. So this color is high demand is red and low demand is blue. Using this method, the idea of this research is to do clustering by inputting the situation and player and the state quantity and behavior. We did two experiments. The first was to learn human behavior. The input data were state Quantify quantities obtained from video videos taken with a video camera. The second was to learn the robot's behavior. The input data is the logging data of the robot match. And the third is still in processing. For the first study, we collected the data by photography playing players who had experience in futsal. The purpose is to clarify whether the load of each player in the team is shared by the whole team. This is the environment view. In this diagram, each team is shown in red and blue. The ball is shown in white. The velocity vector of the players are also shown with arrows. As a result, we succeeded the learning tactics using this system. However, it turned out to be difficult to implement in a robot with velocity vector. So as a result, we have succeeded in mapping the relationship between the player positioning positions and the output the velocity vector. However, when implemented in a robot, it's hard to determine behavior from behavior vector alone. So also we do a second experiment in this second experiment, we let the system learn the robot's behavior. The purpose is to clarify whether the load of each player is shared throughout the team. By produce, producing this next action 
as an output, it is compared with the results clustered by the robot, calculated by the robot. Specifically, it outputs the behavioral categories. This action category is designed to be more aggressive as the behavior algorithm select selection increases. This graph compares with the result with player numbers first and second. The result calculated by the system is shown in orange, and the result calculated by the robot is shown in blue. As a result, we have succeeded in mapping the relationship between the player positions and output the behavior algorithm section, uh, algorithm selection. Using this behavior algorithm selection, it is easier to implement in the robot. Finally, until now, we have been made to appear to act in consent, concert, but it in order to play soccer with humans in the future. The gap between human and robots must be bridged. We will continue to work toward the their realization of robots that can recognize human behavior and move flexibility. flexibility. Thank you. Hi, how are you today? This is Hibiki no Musashi World News. I'm Shuhei Nohara. How about today's content? Oh, yes! So today, I will show you Hibiki no Musashi basic ability of the robot participation in competition in recent years, research result and promotion of robotics, scientific popularization. So Moiko is there to cover the news. Hey, Moiko! Hi, thank you, Shuhei. Here is the latest report from Hibiki no Musashi. Musashi robots can do all basic abilities like getting the ball, dribbling, avoiding the obstacles, and also making a pass. In the game, we also can do all set play. Of course, goalkeeper robot is always defending our goal post. Next, I will show you our participation in competition of robotics and scientific popularization. Every year, we tried to join several competitions not only domestic but also overseas. In 2019, we joined to the Robofest. It is a big robot festival. And the next day, we won at Japan Open 2019. So now Hibiki no Masashi is champion of Japan. Also every year, we demonstrate to convey the interest of robots to children in children's hall and a big shopping mall. Saka robots have been reported on several local TV shows.
武蔵サッカーロボット does more than just play soccer we hold a marathon relay race every year this is a very interesting event where people animals and robots run towards the same goal we are also working to return the elemental robocop technologies to society for example we are working to utilize hoil chairs with an omnidirectional movement Let's do our best anytime. Thank you, Michael. Did you get the interesting information of Hibiki no Musashi? Then last, I would like to introduce the other research result and promotion of robotics, also scientific popularization. Let's get started. Thank you. Basic technology. Now, let's start with the educational programs for other technologies that are required before you can participate in RoboCup. The first robotics education program we will introduce is the Pico EV Echo Challenge. This video was aired on a local TV program. Now, here it comes. This is Pico EV. That runs on 7.2 watts. This robot is being developed to think about how we can save energy consumption. We are also using to run design methods and basic material mechanics in order to be able to carry a single person. This robot can be traveling about 2.5 km in 13 minutes. Final goal, we try to develop the extreme low energy robots, yeah! The next robot education program, we will introduce a small robot. As we know, in a middle-sized lake, the robot must be equipped with all the sensor, microcontroller, kicking mechanism, and so on. Therefore, in a middle-sized league, sensing technology, autonomous behavior algorithms, and embedded technology are important focus for winning. So, we are using RobotSumo to study these technologies. RobotSumo is one of the most famous battle-style competition in the world, with over 4,000 participating robots. Our team won the title of Yokozuna champion in 2017. The robot uses magnets to keep them from leaving the battlefield. Suction power is over 300 kg. We are using this technology for research in collaboration with a company to create robots that can climb walls and clean in slopes. Few robot. Next, we will introduce the tomato harvesting robot. Our team is also running a competition to promote the development of robots that can act in natural environments 
as well as robots that can act autonomously in dynamical environment, such as Robocop. This table shows the specifications. The robot detects tomatoes in image processing, and this robot thinks about which tomato is the most easy to harvest. Next, we are promote competition for the junior division as an effort to train the next generation. We use Lego Mindstorm EV3 robots. Lastly, I would like to introduce an underwater robot. This one is also active research in field robotics. Currently, we are working on a robot that can move to a waypoint and uh, perform autonomous behaviors for oceanographic research. In fact, the robot has success to take photos and capture underwater creatures. How was it? We introduced our team Saka robot and related robot. We hope to share our various technologies with you. Okay, see you soon.